Returning to Pomona for the first event of 91, Amato calmly viewed the challenge of attaining an unprecedented fourth title. But so far, things have not gone Joe's way. At Pomona, he lost traction, losing to a nearly out of control Eddie Hill in round two. And the next two events have not treated him more kindly with a loss to Bernstein at Phoenix. And then this horrific engine explosion at Houston in the first round against Jim Head. To an exhausted Valvoline team, the shattered remnants of that engine might well have symbolized their 1991 effort to date. With three events already in the books, the Bonnet Amato juggernaut seemed nearly motionless. Today, in Gainesville, Florida, the defending series champ looks to his always stoic crew chief, Tim Richards, for the answers that will hopefully help reverse the team's fortunes as... The National Hot Rod Association presents Championship Drag Racing on ESPN Speed World. The NHRA. The world's largest motorsport sanctioning body showcasing speeds in excess of 290 miles per hour and traveling a quarter mile in less than five seconds. Championship drag racing from the NHRA. Each year witnesses a coast-to-coast -coast confrontation known as the Winston Drag Racing Series. And today, the fourth stop on that 18-race pilgrimage is taking place in north-central Florida. The 22nd Annual Gator Nationals. It can be said that each race is a new beginning. The lessons from previous outings have been learned and applied to an all-new effort today by Joe Amato and crew. Still suffering from a painful neck and back, Amato qualified number two at an outstanding 4.94 seconds elapsed time. Earlier today, he defeated Pat Dakin in round number one with another four of 4.97. There is an excitement about conquering adversity, rising to the challenge of defending a Winston championship. But the level of emotional involvement can be taxing for everyone. Just before the action got underway today, I asked Jerry Amato about that very thing. Jerry, what is it like for you spending so much time with two guys as intense as Tim and Joe? It's a lot of fun and it's pretty exciting. I kind of stay out of the way and mind my own business and I know that sooner or later Tim Richards will come up with the winning combination. But just a few pits away, everyone remembers this yellow dragster. Eddie Hill's old short car that was the first into the fours back in 1988. Then we thought we saw its demise in 1989 at the Winter Nationals in Pomona when Eddie did a flip-flop and fly that has never been equal. But here's big news. Old Yeller is back and the star of the Gator Nationals. Eddie in the short car, number one qualifier at 492. Earlier today, he beat Jim Head with a 496. The fans are going wild. Now, what do you get if you qualify low? Well, you get $4,000 in bonus cash from Budweiser. And in the case of the Hills, a gift from a fan. Ursie Hill, the newest crew member. She's a doll. Oh, this is a miniature dachshund that some uh, fans gave us, and her name's Hot Dog Hill. <laughs> How is she going to get along with Bunky Bat the cat in this trailer on the road for 11 months? She wants to play, but the jury's still out with a cat. He doesn't know if he wants to relinquish his seniority or not. Good luck next round. Thank you. Well, the pits are full of wildlife. Dachshund, Siamese cats, and warming up on another area of the pits is the one they call the snake. Don Fredal making his preparations for round number two of Top Fuel. Working with me today is Big Daddy Don Garlitz, three-time NHRA Top Fuel champion. Your usual host, Dave McLaughlin, is recuperating from heart surgery, recuperating very nicely, and should rejoin us in a race or two. Don, welcome. Thank you very much, Steve. Let's pick up the action. It's Pro Stock, round two. And it'll be a pair of General Motors products, Bruce Allen versus Jerry Ackman. And we can easily tell you that they are both winless so far in this season because one man has won all three previous races. Daryl Alderman in the Dodge will be seeing him later on here in round number two. Two yellow cars, very hard to tell the difference, but Ekman is in the far lane, Bruce Allen in the near lane. Jerry Ekman wheeling that Pennzoil Pontiac from Ventura, California. You'll recall last year he came down to the final event of the year, still had a shot at the Winston Championship. Bruce Allen, Arlington, Texas, the Rear and Morrison Super Shop Chevrolet Beretta. Hard to say which of these cars has the better aerodynamics. They certainly look different visually, but the wind tunnel says they're about the same. Two very evenly matched cars, Steve. Should be a real good race. 2,350 pounds, racing gasoline in the tank, two huge four-barrel carburetors, 500 cubic inch maximum size engines. A beautiful start. 
by both drivers. Identical reaction times. It is a race of horsepower. And the nod goes to Jerry Eckman. A 7.34 to a losing, if you can call it that. 7.35. Both cars topping 187 miles per hour. Don Garlitz, this was about as perfect a pro stock side-by-side -side duel as you could ask for to kick things off today at the Gators. Unbelievable race. Perfect reaction time, meaning that they got off right together. Couldn't have started the race any closer. Down course, they were tied together. Two yellow cars side by side. Anybody could have been the winner. Just barely at the end, by just a nod, Jerry Ekman beats Bruce Allen. Jerry Ekman scrambles out of his Pontiac wondering who won. The NHRA Motorcraft Gator Nationals are being brought to you by Goodyear maker of the world's most successful tires, the Goodyear Eagles. And by Quaker State, the Big Q is one top motor oil. And by Ford Motorcraft, choose the replacement parts that provide more peace of mind. Motorcraft quality parts from Ford. We'll be back to Gainesville. Gainesville, Florida for the Motorcraft Quality Parts Gator Nationals. I'm Steve Evans along with Big Daddy Don Garlitz and that of course is Tim Richards putting final preparations on Joe Amato's top field extra for round number two to come. In the new tower extension here at Gainesville Raceway, anticipation high even though this is the second weekend we have been in this part of Florida. Last week's finals being rained out and moved ahead seven days. All right, pro stock continues. And it will be Daryl Alderman, you're on board with a man who has been undefeated this season, and he will be up against Ricky Smith. Ricky's a guy who, if he can't beat you with horsepower, he will try to do it with driving every single time. Ricky hails from King, North Carolina. In round number one, he defeated Larry Morgan's usually strong Castrol GTX Oldsmobile. Daryl Alderman is from Lexington, Kentucky, where recently he was indicted for conspiracy to distribute cocaine. He has pleaded not guilty. NHRA says not guilty until proven otherwise. He retains his competition license, his points, and his right to drag race professionally. Daryl Alderman, the winner of three consecutive events this year on the Winston season in the Dodge sponsored by Mopar Parts. Well, there's some people with some of the best seats in the house, Steve. The brand new tower that they just constructed here at Gainesville really made the place look nice. And weather-wise, what a difference a week can make. It is absolutely beautiful as Daryl Alderman stages a dodge against the STP Pontiac of Ricky Smith. We'll watch the reaction timers very closely here. That may be Ricky's only hope. Alderman qualified much quicker. It is Smith away first, but not by much. Alderman moving through the gears. Alderman has got Smith by a clean car length. 7.32, we're losing 7.40. Alderman speed, 188 miles per hour. So, Postock, round number two, thunders on, and here is the famous Ford, Ford Probe to be exact, of Bob Glidden, sponsored by the event sponsor, Motorcraft. He'll be facing Butch Leal in the far lane. Now, in my opinion, Leal is one of the better levers in pro stock. He will take an advantage on the starting line. Oh, I heartily agree with that. And Butch Leal keeps his reflexes sharp, playing lots and lots of golf. From Columbus, Ohio, he might someday even try out for the senior store. But right now, he's too busy drag racing. A man who's always been busy drag racing all of his adult life is Bob Glidden, the 10-time champion, who last year came up a little bit short and finished number two in the world. Leal in the light-colored car over in the far lane, the bright red Motorcraft Ford Probe of Bob Glidden in the near lane. As Big Daddy said, look for Leal to try to get an advantage, and Leal does. Glidden is going to need a good run to overcome what he lost in the starting line. And he's got it. 731, again, 188 miles per hour. Three pro stock cars in a row running exactly the same top speed. So Glidden moves on to the final four. And up next is a guy who's had a lot of good luck and a little bit of bad. Warren Johnson in the Oldsmobile. Johnson has been in the finals at the Winter Nationals and at the Arizona Nationals. His other car driven by Scott Jeffrey on in the finals at the Super Nationals and still they can't come up with a win. And Joel Lapone Jr. hopes to keep it that way here in the Summit Chevrolet Beretta. Joel Lapone had a tough customer in round number one, but he disposed of him, Jim Yates. Lapone out of Berwyn, Pennsylvania. Warren Johnson driving the AC Delco Oldsmobile from Duluth, Georgia. He beat Tony Christian earlier. He was a tough character. Let's go to Steve now at the far end with Bob Glidden. 
Well, Bob, you look like a man that could use some encouraging words. So I have some for you. You just ran quicker than the Dodge. That gives you lane choice over the Dodge in the next round. Well, that doesn't mean a lot nowadays with that Dodge, Steve. But, you know, it sure feels good to win a couple of rounds. 731. We've been, we've been uh, almost uh, a third of the season trying to win a couple of rounds, and we feel pretty good right now. This fortune's definitely improving. Well, now we know who one half of the final four is. It'll be Glidden versus Alderman, and the winner of this race will be who faces Jerry Eckman. And to refresh your memory, in the far lane, it is Joe LaPone, Jr. On the left side of your screen, near side of the racetrack, is Warren Johnson LaPone, tardy off the mark. You can't do that racing somebody with the power of Johnson, and there's why. A clean victory for Warren. 7.29. Big speed. Best we've seen today from the Pro Stock Breed. 189 miles per hour. Lapone trails at 7.38. 187 miles per hour. So there you have it. It'll be Bob Glidden up against Daryl Alderman. The fans will be on their feet for that one. The Ford of Glidden has the lane choice. Warren Johnson versus Jerry Ackman. Oldsmobile against Pontiac. And Johnson has the lane choice by quite a margin. And already rolling into the staging lanes, Eddie the Thrill Hill, Wichita Falls, Texas, the number one qualifier. He'll be up against Don the Snake for Dome, and judging by that smile, he feels awfully confident. 